Hello, and welcome to the Z-Hut. So I was out in my garage the other day, <coughs> grabbed my cordless rec reciprocating saw, went to cut something, battery was dead. Grabbed the other battery, it was dead. Now, unfortunately, the only reciprocating saw I have is my cordless. Now, originally, I have a set. I've got scale saw, reciprocating saw, drill, and flashlight. I had three batteries originally. One is completely stone dead. The other is getting weak. It'll run about half what it used to. And uh, that leaves me with just one battery. And when it goes dead, I can't use any of my power tools. Now, I do have a regular corded skill saw, and I have a corded drill. But uh, what if you were, like, on a job, or the cordless set was the only drills and saws you had? How could you use them? Well... I came up with a good idea. Now I'm going to take, and this is actually the junk battery, and in a couple minutes we're going to bring the camera up to the workbench here and open this up. What we're going to do is take the batteries out of it, then we're going to put this little plug in the back, and you've seen these little plugs, they're what um, your wall warts and your car accessories use to plug in power. Now I am using, this is a 14.4 volt system. You should be safe with anything between the 9.6 and 18 volt. Now, if you are running down towards the 9 volt, usually those batteries do charge up to 12 volts, but be careful. You might burn out your drill or whatever you're um, using this on. So just disclaimer, try this at your own risk. If you're using anything that says 12 volts to 18, you should be okay. But still, this is just something I would recommend only doing with tools that, well... If they burn out, you're, it's not the end of the world, and you just throw them away. But for my situation, I, uh, I'm going to hook this up. Because another nice thing, I mean, if you were on a job and your battery went dead, and you were out of batteries, you could start your vehicle, plug this in. And also, I've got one of these, uh, I think it's a 15-foot extension cable. I also got another cable here I'm going to be hooking up. It goes to that same plug but it goes to these alligator clips. You can clip it on the battery. And you could just bring your vehicle up near to where you needed to use your drill or saw to finish the job up. Very handy. And uh, I actually got another idea for this in the next video. Uh, I'll tell you about it at the end of the video, but we'll be doing another video about these batteries too. All right, well, with that, why don't we just move the camera up here and uh, we'll take this apart. Now, for tools for doing this, you're going to need... Whatever kind of screwdriver, and this looks like it's Allen head or star bit. Yeah, it looks like Torx bits. You're going to need a uh, screwdriver to get them apart. You're going to need a soldering iron. And depending on your battery, some of the DeWalt's have that tower that comes up. Those, I did look at a video on taking those apart. You're going to need a hot glue gun or some kind of epoxy because they're attached to the top side of the batteries that are inside. And we're removing the batteries. We're getting rid of them, throwing them out. So you'll be, you'll have to glue that up in there but other than that I don't think you really need any other tools so uh, oh you're gonna need a drill to drill the hole for the plug and well maybe you'll be lucky and you'll still have a battery that works so all right well I'll catch you at the workbench in just a second let's get working on this okay I've got the camera set up here on the workbench I've got my junk battery that don't work and a couple tools, everything I think I'm going to need. If I need something else, my toolbox ain't too far off. But um, first, I went and found, uh, it was a Torx bed, actually. It's a T10 for my battery. And this is a Black & Decker battery. So let's take these screws out. All right, I got the screws out. Wow, those were a lot longer than I thought they were going to be a lot longer. Now, hopefully, this uh, will just open right up. Oh, yeah, that's nice. I didn't know if we were going to have to pry on it or not. This stuff just falls right out when you take it apart. I'm going to stick it back in there so I remember how it goes. All right, well, this battery looks like uh, 
the DeWalt's, I am going to have to hot glue gun it up in there. Other than that, it looks, we just simply got to pull this out. And I've got a good battery to test which is the positive or negative. Otherwise, you could use the charger, but uh, you are going to want to know which is positive and which side is negative. It doesn't say on the battery itself, but I'm not going to worry about that. I'm going to go ahead and cut these leads because I, I have a good battery I can test and figure out which one needs to go where. Actually got a little bit better cutter for this down here. All right, I don't think we're going to need that as a spacer. Oops, that's going to go. Okay, it looks like what I could do is I could hot glue gun this, or I could take some JB Weld or some super glue. I've even got some PVC plumbing glue. You know what? That just might work. I might try the plumbing cement. We'll see how that holds. If that don't, then I can always uh, do some super glue or epoxy. All right, well, let me clear this out of the way. And also, I'm going to go out and um, check something here. I'm going to drill the hole. looking like I'm not going to have room to put it on the back. What I could, you know, I don't want to put it on the bottom because I want to be able to set it down and have it stand upright. So what it's looking like is I'm going to have to put the power plug on one of these two sides. What's this? There's no, we don't need that can go in the garbage. We don't need that either. Yeah, I don't think I want it in the front. I think I'd rather have it on the side. It would have been nice to put it in the back. If I put it in the back, it'd have to be in the side and angle. I don't like that. What I might do is drill it out and put it right here because there's a nice flat area with enough space to be able to get it in there and tighten it down. So, all right, well, I'm going to go um, and drill that because I think I'm going to use my drill press to get it nice and straight. Well, I could just use the cordless drill too, but I'm going to go ahead and go drill the hole for this, um, figure out which is positive and negative. Well, I'm pretty sure this here is the negative and this is the positive. Usually the negatives are on a strip like that. And then I'll get the soldering gun and um, all that set up here. So I'll catch you back in just a moment. All right, I got the hole drilled. And I did do a little modification. I was originally going to use this so I could plug into it. But I was looking at the connectors on it, and they are pretty small. And I don't know if this would hold up. I think this might have melted from the amount of current going through it. Um, but I was looking at this plug I have here and the wires on this and it's it's heavier duty and the wires on it are about the same gauge as what was coming off the battery so I think this will be fine um, we're gonna find out when I'm done we're gonna take this out and we'll actually plug it into the cigarette lighter in my truck and we'll see if it works but all right well I've drilled the hole and I decided to put it on this side because when I'm drilling I usually use my right hand so it'll go off to the side not hanging down in front of me and I've tinned the wires so they're ready to solder on and uh, I took my meter and tested and I was right the one that has the metal strip here is ground and this one's positive so well, we might as well go ahead and uh, solder this on All right, that one's on. 
set that down for a second. Now this one, I think we'll come at it like that. Uh oh, I might need my help and hands. Oh, I got it. We're heating up some thick stuff, so it is going to take a moment to get the solder to flow. Oh, almost. I'm going to put a little more flux on there. Ah, come on, get on there. Trying to do stuff one hand, it don't always work. Alright, let's try this again. It sort of stuck. I must not have had it heated up quite good enough. Yeah, I maybe should have used a torch or the soldering gun, but I think this will heat it up here. There we go. Now it's starting to flow. I'm going to hold it on there for a few moments. Make sure it does heat up good enough. Yeah, I think we got it that time. Yep, that is on there. All right, well, I'm going to let this cool off for a moment, and I'm going to get the soldering iron out of the way and then get everything back over here to get ready to put this together. And I'm going to also go find uh, some glue for gluing this. So we will be right back. All right, uh, everything's cooled off, and I took some PVC pipe glue and I put that in there. It seems to be holding. If that does break loose, what I'll do is use some super glue. But uh, unfortunately, I am temporarily out of super glue, but I'm going to pick some up uh, in the next couple days so I have it just in case I need it. All right, well, now all we got to do is put this back together, and then we'll go out and plug this into my truck cigarette lighter and see if it's actually going to work. All right, we got it put back together. Um, now I just can plug in my cigarette lighter plug, plug it into the cigarette lighter. I also have another extension cable, heavy duty one for this. Plus I also have another extension cable that plugs into this and extends it out about another 15 feet. So this will give me plenty of cable. The only thing I'm concerned about is getting that much cable. It might start warming up, but I think if we're not using this heavy duty, we should be okay, especially with this short of a cable. Now, um, I'm gonna go try this out on the truck and we're gonna bring the camera out there, but um, could also easily use this with a battery charger as long as it's, I, I think one that is 10 amp at least should do it, but if you've got one that's 40, definitely. Um, but all right, uh, well, let me uh, take the camera out there and set it up by the truck put my coat on it is winter here right now so it's a little chilly out there so all right well I'll catch you out there in just a moment and we'll see how this works all right I'm out here at the truck and I got it hooked up as you can see it works I do have a little connection problem in here I think my terminal is a little dirty I have to play with it a little that'll be easy to fix it might just be the 12 volt plug I'm using too I have more of them so I might just try a different one. As you can see, it does work, and it's got some pretty good torque. I can't stop it with my hand. 
Now, I tested the battery when I was figuring out which was the positive and negative for sure. And it was at about 14.2 volts. And I know my truck from testing it using the voltmeter, it runs at about 14 volts when it's running. When it's not, I think it's like 13.7, 13.6. And that's more than enough to run these power tools easily. So there we go. Now when uh, your cordless drill batteries go dead, well, you can still use them. Or um, if you got a cordless skill saw, reciprocating saw, or I even got a uh, flashlight that plugs into these batteries. And Well, now when my battery's dead, I can still use them. So, well, I'd like to thank you for joining us here at the Z-Hut today. I hope you found this information useful. If you did, give us a thumbs up. I'd appreciate it big time. So... Thanks for joining us here today. Have a great day, and remember, have fun building.